Let's talk about mentors. In my life, I've had a bunch of mentors, but many of you confuse mentor with coach. And let me explain. My landlord was my mentor. I met the man and talked to him 15, 18 times. The longest conversation that we ever had was roughly 20 minutes, maybe 25 tops. Most of the conversations was me handing him a rent check and we would chit chat for five, 10 minutes, sometimes 15. And he mentored me on many different things. A mentor says, hey, here's a suggestion, or hey, this is what I'm doing it, and this is how you do it. Many of you want a personal coach. A personal coach is like the O-line coach or the D-line coach in the NFL who is present, who walks you through drills, who walks you through plays. Many of you have confused the mentorship relationship with the coaching relationship because coaches get paid. Because coaches are hands-on. They're working with you. They're putting stuff together. They're helping you with your training. They're helping you with your execution of your position. They're helping you do something. They're helping you with your diet. They're helping you with your workout. Coaches are hands-on, physical, and present. Mentors could be a book, it could be a CD, it could be an old person, a mentor could be a child. But many of you want a coach, but you want to classify that as a mentorship or the best of both worlds is an apprenticeship where you're providing the mentor with something of value in return for the mentorship. One of the things that my mentor, my landlord, Mr. Arbizer did was school me and point me in the right direction because essentially I had to work. And I'll give you the first classification. I asked him about the building that I was renting, which I got in through a sublet. Then I needed more space. Then I went to him direct. I came in through Ted. And I was like, why don't you sell these businesses? And this is all he said. This was our first conversation. I can't sell them. They're in a trust. That's all he said. Nothing else. I can't sell them. They're in a trust. So this got me very curious. And I asked him another question. I said, how many buildings? And he said, because he was a Polish Jew with a very thick accent. And I think, and I think he said 35. And then he got in his shag and he went off. So I went back to the warehouse, got on the Google machine, and I started looking up trust because before that point in time, I had heard of a trust, but I didn't understand what a trust meant. I thought that was something that rich people did. So I went to the Google machine and I started looking it up and I found out there was a revocable trust and there was an irrevocable trust. And based, and based on the information he gave me, he had an irrevocable trust. The check was written out to his son and daughters and written out to a trust. 30 buildings, then I went in and looked at some more. I realized that those 30 buildings had to be paid off to be in the trust. I was like, whoa, mind blown. At that moment, I got an education because I was mentored to in a five minute conversation. See, a mentorship relationship is you must pick up the ball and you must do a lot of work because the mentor is not getting paid. The mentor is not schooling you. The mentor is not holding your hand. That's a coach or an apprenticeship. Part of the mentor relationship is 90% on you. A mentor's like, here, here's a nugget of information. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to execute on it? And I sat there in my warehouse because we were renting the middle warehouse and it was only like 4,000 square feet at the time. And I was like, I got to give me a piece of this action. This is fantastic. But see, I met my mentor when I was on the highway. If I had not had a business, if I didn't rent from him, this conversation never would have happened. Because I was on the playing field, I was playing the game, I was still in the Pee Wee Leagues at the time, or maybe say high school football. I was junior leagues, and I'm talking to an NFL owner, and he's dropping game. But see, when someone drops game, you got it. One of the things that really happens that really skews people is we have a sense of entitlement. 
Many people feel entitled to the precious knowledge of those who've come before just simply because they want it. But this is how the mentor relationship works. A mentor will drop in your life when you're ready. That old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I've seen that time and time and time again. When I was doing something, when I was on the precipice of that next big breakthrough and I was missing a few important ingredients, boom, someone would drop out just like out of nowhere. Second time I talked to my mentor, my landlord. We're talking about money. And he said something very important. He said, when you run a company, you want to take the least amount of money possible out of the company. And we went a little deeper, and that's where I developed the philosophy. I've said it many times. I live on a percentage of my income. I don't live at 50%. I don't live at 60%. I don't live at 80%. I live on less than 7% of my income. A guy from him, because before him, I, I thought I had good saving habits, but this was a, Poli a Polish Jew who was a chemist and an engineer. So I took that lesson, I took that, picked up the ball and I started to apply it to my life. And at that point, I immediately started to save 50, 60% of my income. Life changed. Life became like, whoa, money starts stacking up like crazy. Because in my older videos, you hear me talk about, talk about work like an immigrant, but I've never said save like an immigrant. I was exposed to Polish Jews, a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Asians, and a lot of Indians, and we did business together. We talked about things, and this is where many of my philosophies came from. This is why I am not a member of Hotep Nation or pro-black nation. And it isn't because these things are bad. It's because they're limiting because you only want to be in this circle. Indians, Asians, Russians, Jews will come outside of their circle. They'll keep their culture, but they'll come outside of their circle to get that money and bring it back in. And I was just amazed. Then another conversation we had was about competition. He actually started a machine company and his designs were so innovative that people just threw money at him. This is why he was able to buy 35 warehouses and pay cash for them. He said cash flow is more important than market share. It's more important than ownership. Cash flow? And he, you know, he didn't tell me. I didn't know all this stuff until I read his obituary. But because he lived on a fixed percent of his income, and this is one of the things that he also taught me. He said, I've lived on the same money for decades. But once again, because he had did so well, he had created, what he lived on was very high. And, but in comparison to what he earned, it seemed really small. And that's something else I haven't shared with y'all. My income or my standard of living has not drastically changed since 2009. Even when I was making all that money from my book sales, I was still living the same. I did not raise, I recently raised my standard of living two years ago from essentially $3,000 a month, because really I could have got about 1800 to around three, now my standard of living is about seven, but I have money in the bank, I have good cash flow, and I can do it. One of the big issues with you starting a business, you making moves, you making money, is you want to spend so much of the cash that your business can't grow. Your business can't explode. Another lesson I learned from my mentor, he was very charitable. He gave away a lot of money. And he told me, he says, I don't give money to be a good guy. I give money so I can get money back. See, he understood the law of reciprocity in the universe. So as he was throwing money out there, money was coming back at him, which kind of negates the frugal, cheap millionaire status. This man gave away a building. Does that sound like a frugal or cheap person? No, that's very generous because money must circulate. Money must be moving. So he's like, he always kept money moving. You know, whenever he got to a certain amount, he bought another building because his standard of living never changed. Another thing I learned from um, my millionaire landlord mentor, 
enjoy life. He loved what he did. And I really, re that lesson became reinforced when I almost died. This is why, you know, I ended the other channel because it was no longer fun. Why do something that's not fun? Why do that? That makes no sense. And there was a few other lessons that came to me from just being around him and having conversations. I would think if I had to add it up, we may have talked two to three hours over those 15 to 18 conversations. That's it. That's it. He did not sit me down. He did not spoon feed me. He actually gave me high level advice that I had to take action on. One of the things, and th this is another thing that why I'm getting into real estate again, but on a different level, is because of the, I saw how he lived. I remember one time I had to go to his house to drop off the rent check. And his wife, oh yeah, you're gonna love this lesson. You're really gonna love this lesson. And his wife came out and I went in and I talked to him and stuff. He had a very nice house. I didn't know what this house was worth until recently because I looked it up. He lived in that house for about 40 years. It was a part of North Decatur that was up and coming, Toco Hills area. And it was a mid-century modern house. Now, if you know anything about architecture, those houses were not cheap. So he bought a very expensive house at the time he bought it. It was avant God. It was uh, new. It was modern. He wasn't cheap. He was frugal. He was thrifty, but he wasn't cheap. And this is something else, too. His wife was 15 years younger than he was. Something else I learned from him. And oddly enough, six months after he died, she died. And I was assume because she missed him. So he's like, I have no other reason to be here, you know, because uh, at one point he had his part of his health had failed. His mind was always super sharp, but sometimes he needed a walker or a wheelchair to get around and she was his caretaker. I saw the love because she was very, very voracious. She, she, she was a bulldog, you know, she fought for his interests and stuff because there was a miscommunication. She thought I was trying to get over and he's like, no, 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 no. We talked about this before. She said, you sure? She was fighting for his interest. She was deeply invested in a relationship. She bore his children. And she, let me say she was 15 years younger. Does that sound familiar? I got that from him. One of the things that you have to understand is this man, like if you go to Mountain Industrial Tucker, there was another immigrant in that area and they pretty much developed that whole corridor. They had some part of it. They had some of the biggest businesses. And if you go down Highway 78 and you hit a few streets, you'd be at his house. He didn't live too far from his business. Something else I learned from my mentor, because why would you build this big, bodacious building and ha business and have to drive an hour to get to work? You don't make any sense. So just by the way that he lived, just by the way he presented himself, just the way his romantic interest was, I soaked it all up. I was a sponge. Because do you know what got me? That this building, which was 10,000, about 50,000, 60,000 square feet when you count both sides, it was paid for. It was paid off. That blew my mind. I was like, because I didn't have any friends with paid off buildings. I didn't have any friends with trust. So I, every time he talked to me, he said something, I went to the Google machine, I looked it up, and whole new worlds opened up to me. But see, I wasn't arrogant. I didn't think that I knew more than he did. I didn't even challenge anything he ever said. I was like, okay, all right, Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam, okay. Took it, acted on it, and the life that I have today is a direct benefit from his mentorship. I have no debt. I have no car payments. Only thing isn't paid for is this house, which I could pay for, but why well, pay for it when the recession's coming and the value of the house is going to drop and I can slide in for a deal. Learn that from him as well. 15, 18 conversations has been the reason for millions of dollars in income. But see, I was ready. I was out here killing dragons. I was out here fighting. I was out here trying to make some of myself. I had come out of this horrible situation and I wanted to be somebody. 
I didn't complain. I didn't whine. I took action. And this is what a mentor will do for you because see, you got to be ready for the mentor because if a mentor gives you good advice and you want to challenge this advice and you want to have a discussion, but your results are nothing compared to the results of the mentor, you be boo boo the fool. And a lot of people will do that. They're poor. They don't have a relationship they want. They're not living the life they want. But someone, me, are giving you information, giving you principles that will make you successful over time. And you want to challenge it because you up in your feelings like Kiki. This is a huge problem because newsflash. You may have had mentors in your life, but because you were not ready, you couldn't receive the information because you were who you were. I was ready because I had been through a process where many of my beliefs and value systems were exposed to be felonious. So whenever I came across someone with good advice, I listened. I never challenged anybody. And I tried it. And if it didn't work out, I said, okay, that didn't work. That was it. Here on the internet, we have people who become experts in their mind. No results, no wealth, no honeys, no business, no money, no revenue. But for some reason, this person is an expert because he speaks loudly. That's it. So if you want to enter into a mentorship relationship, be aware of the people who are already in your life. My grandmother mentored me. Men in the neighborhood mentored me. School teachers mentored me. People I met briefly in airports mentored me. The last guy that uh, I met in first class when I was coming back from Orlando, he builds houses. He has a race car. He mentored me. But I was willing to accept the information because I have a certain level of success and a lot of the things he said mirrored many of the things I had already experienced. Many of you think that you can judge someone, but you don't have enough experience. You're not stupid. You're not dumb, but you are arrogant. You are full of yourself because you feel that your opinions are worth more than anything else. Tell me, does your opinions pay your mortgage? Mine does. Does your opinion set you free? My last video, a lot of people didn't like that. I have personal freedom and financial freedom because I listen to people. And I'm at a point where I can give back and drop these jewels. There are many people out here who will help you if you're open to help. I've had people buy websites for me. I've had people, this one guy, and I'm not going to mention his name because he still watches. This guy is worth, I don't know, we talked. He didn't tell me, he just kind of hit around about 20, 30 million. You know, this dude sent me $5,000. He's like, just, just to support your channel, $5,000. We talked a few times. That was it. $5,000. You know why? Water seeks its own level. And if you are not having people enter your life who are water, you're doing something wrong. I know you don't want to hear that. There is something wrong. In this year, in this, in this economy, in this world, there is no reason for you to be poor. None. There's no reason for you to be lackful. There's no reason for you not to have the relationship you want. Most people get in their own way because they are afraid. They're so afraid of being wrong or trusting the wrong person and getting hurt. So they pull up this wall that does provide protection, but it also keeps mentors out. It keeps good people out. It keeps so many people out because you're so afraid. So develop a little courage and your life could change. All right. For those of you who want this, I've set some stuff up and I'm going to make it permanent. If you want to enter into a mentor apprentice type relationship, there's a calendar below and there's days that I will be available to talk and the prices and stuff. 
Now, we'll see how this goes, but understand the let, let's holler, let's chop it up. It is not about arrogance. It's about time. I don't have time for that. I would have to lose money to talk to you for free. Question, would you lose money to talk to me? Be honest, put that in the comments. I think I know the answer. So that's gonna be below, plus I'm gonna put some kind of Christmas special below as well. All right, so with that, be good, be abundant, make moves, and most important, be open and courageous. And I'll see you guys in the next video.